All right, in this final video in this little mini series, we're going to look at how we determine how many colors can be uh, any individual pixel can be. Now, earlier I told you that generally it's 16.7 million colors. So I'm going to tell you how we arrive at that number. So I've just grabbed a paintbrush here and I've got just a screen and I'm just painting a pigment of green here. Now, if I come back and double click this to go select a new color, depending on which mode I'm in, whether I'm in red, green, blue, or HSB, or CMYK, or lab, it's going to look a little bit different. Um, but I'm just going to come up here to hue. So I can pick any one of these hues. I can switch into S mode and come and drag across here to switch the saturation or the brightness, to switch the brightness scale of each of these hues. And uh, there's a lot of different colors here. And so in this document, there is 16.7 million possible selections I can make for any individual stroke or color or pixel. And there's a few things that we need to learn about in order to understand why. So the first thing is, what is your Photoshop document set up as? Now, if you haven't changed any defaults, you're working in a 24-bit document. So if I click down here, you can see I've got three channels, RGB color, and it says 8BPC. And that means that I'm working with an 8-bit per channel, that's the BPC, 8 bits per channel color document. And that's the default. When you go to File, New inside of Photoshop, if you don't change any of these settings, right here it says Color Mode, RGB, and then 8-bit. This is Photoshop's bread and butter. It works with 8-bit documents in RGB color mode, and it uh, that's sort of, if you want the full power of Photoshop, I sh maybe I shouldn't say full power, but if you want the full features of Photoshop, this is the document you're going to want to work in. Everything works in 8-bit color mode, basically. If you switch to a 24-bit or a 16 or 32, there may be a few filters or a few effects that don't work in those higher bit depths. So let's talk about bit depth. All right, so I've got an RGB document, and it says that each individual color channel can support up to 8 bits of information. So we're just going to quickly draw this out so you can sort of see this math, how this math works behind the scenes. All right, we're going to get a little bit technical as we look at some of the math behind this. So don't get caught up in the math so much. Just sort of try to look at the big picture and understand how these individual pixels are working and the math behind them inside of your Photoshop document. I think it's important to understand a few of these basics because that will help you understand why Photoshop displays the different numbers in its varying spots. Now I'm going to illustrate this to help us um, visually see as I, as I work along here. So I'm just going to sort of pick a red. We'll just work in an RGB document. So let's assume this is a pixel. So I'm going to drop here. This is a red pixel. And then we'll switch over to a green pixel, even though I'm not grabbing the perfect hues up here. So red, green, blue. So here's my green pixel. And we'll jump over here and grab our blue. And uh, draw our blue pixel. So we know that our document is an RGB document made up of these three hues. Now, when we looked at our, um, down here, when we pulled this up earlier, we can see that my document is an 8 BPC document. In other words, 8 bits per channel. So we know that there's three channels in this document. We can go look at our channels. There's a red, a green, and a blue channel. And those three channels each have these varying levels of information. So I've got my red, my green, and my blue channel. All right. Now, my document says that each channel can be 8 bits. So my red channel is 8 bits, my green channel is 8 bits, and my blue channel is the same thing here, 8 bits. So the big question then is, what's a bit, right? Now, a bit is just a computer term. You've probably heard that computers run on ones and zeros, and they run on a system known as binary. Now, binary is just a simple numbering system, which is 1 or 0. So this sort of actually goes back to electricity. The way that computers work is with transistors. So transistors stop or regulate, if you will, the flow of electricity. So electricity is on or it's off, or 1, on, 0, off. You can think of this as black and white, or yes and no. So in a single bit, so in one bit, um, I can store two pieces of information, yes 
or no, on or off, okay? So this is important to understand. A single bit gets me two pieces of information in, in a computer world. So if I have eight bits, well, that's just the simple math here. We just do two times two times, whoops, two times two times two times two, eight times. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One more. Two times two times two times two equals, that's the same thing as seeing two to the eighth power. And if we do that math here, I'm actually not gonna type it out. You can type this out on your own. This equals 256. Okay, now that number right there is important. 256. So now we know that in eight bits of information, I can have up to 256 pieces of information stored. So in other words, each individual channel, the red, the green, and the blue can have any colors between zero and 255. That's the way that Photoshop works. If you apply a command in Photoshop, you'll notice, I'm just gonna pull one up here. I just applied the levels command. You notice it says zero to 255. That's because Photoshop numbering starts with zero, not with one. Otherwise it would be one to 256. But because we start with zero, the maximum is actually 255. All right, now, if I take 256 times 256 times 256, I'll actually do this one for you here on the keyboard so we can uh, see the actual, uh, in fact, I think I can do it right here. 256 times 256 times 256. And that gives me right there, you can see that number right there, 16.7 million or 16,777,216 different colors. So now we have, that's where that 16.7 million number came from that I mentioned in the other videos. So we have 16.7 roughly, right? Million colors, any individual pixel can be inside of Photoshop because I can have 256 varying reds combined with 256 varying greens combined with 256 varying blues gives me a total possible range of 16.7 million. And we know that each individual pixel is made up of a single red, green, and blue color like we looked at earlier. So I know that's a little bit technical there, but that's how RGB works. Now, you can sort of, if you're, uh, if you're really good, I suppose, at doing math in your head, you can sort of guess what the color is going to be depending on the RGB values. So let's go ahead and grab a hue over here. Um, we'll just pick one at random. Let's get, I don't know, maybe a... Uh, this dark pink here. And I'm just going to color this in over here. Okay, so we've colored in a little bit here. Now let's get our eyedropper tool and sample this color and go look at the values now. So I'm going to double click my foreground color to pull all these up at once again. And I'll pull this down a little bit. And you can see right here that, I'll zoom in here a little bit so you can see this a little easier here. The red is 158. There's no green at all and just a little bit of blue. And you can see that, you know, red mixed with a little bit of blue is giving me this sort of dark red color, if you will. And it sort of makes sense if you try to mix that in your head, um, you may be able to come up with those colors as well. Or if we look at this in the HSB model, this has a hue of 325, completely saturated and about mid brightness. So if we were to go back and look at our previous um, color wheel, that, you know, if we rotate our hue all the way around and did our brightness, you can sort of see what that color would be as well in the HSB model. And let's come back in here. If we look at our CMYK model, that's that color represented with pigments or inks. Now, the last thing I wanna cover here in this video is hexadecimal. So we have this weird number here, which is a hexadecimal number, which starts with the pound sign and then followed by six digits. And the way hexadecimal works is actually pretty much exactly like RGB. The way it works is that the first two digits in a hex number, in fact, I'm gonna open this back up and copy this one down. So it's 9E005D, okay? So nine, now I can't remember. Um, oh, I was making up. Nine, let's see, whoops, I got my wrong tool selected. And I got my 
different color now. Go back here and get black. So 9E00, I don't know what it was, 5D. Oh, well. So that's the hexadecimal. And the way that hex works is the first two digits represent the red color. The second two digits represent the green. And the third two digits represent the blue. And the reason it's called hexadecimal, hex meaning six, decimal or deci meaning 10, is it's because it's a 16 base numbering system. So we have zero through nine, that gives us 10 digits. And then we have A through F, that gives us our extra six. So A, B, C, D, E, F. So a total of 16 digits in hexadecimal. So the numbers you see in hex will always only be zero through nine and A through F. So basically this is, this is a little bit, this is not, it's not perfectly um, linear like I'm gonna illustrate here, it's more logarithmic. But we can sort of think of this as E, well that's A, B, C, D, E, so that's like 15. So here we have like nine times 15. Here's zero, zero, so zero times zero. In other words, zero green. And then five D, well that's like five times D, A, B, C, D, that's like uh, 14, five times 14. So if you multiply those together and multiply those together, you'll sort of get similar values. Let me go back and sample that color again to your RGB. So you can see zero on the green, right? We can see that from our, covered it up. We can see that from our hex, no green on the hex either. And the, uh, the red is 158, so that's gonna be close to that. And the blue, 93, that's gonna be close to that. So that's the way hex works. It's just a way of representing, it's just another, it's the exact same thing as RGB, really, there's no difference. But instead of using um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine digits to represent a single RGB color, I can represent it with just six digits, one, two, three, four, five, six, in hexadecimal. And that's really the only benefit, is you can represent an RGB color with less amount of space, I suppose, or less memory. Now, you'll typically only use RGB values if you work in the web. Um, that's where you'll see them a lot, is on web pages and CSS and things like that. You'll see hexadecimal values all over the place. Um, other than that, you'll probably work in RGB or HSB color modes inside of Photoshop. So I hope that helps you just a little bit understand. Um, I know it's kind of messy there, but that's the math behind um, pixels and, and in a typical um, document. So I'm gonna delete all this wonderful artwork here. And so the terminology I think is a little bit confusing in Photoshop, but the document we're working with, they refer to as a 24-bit document. So I'm working in a 24-bit document. And what that means is it's eight bits for each one of those channels. So eight plus eight plus eight equals 24. In other words, my total document size is 24 bits. And, and that's why when you say file new, um, down here it says 8 bits, but remember that's 8 bits per channel for a total of 24. And uh, most, uh, when you take an image off your digital camera, it's 24 bits. Most things are 24 bit images. Photoshop, you'll, you'll note, can create higher bit depths. So I can create a 16 bit depth um, document and I can even create a 32 bit depth document. And these are just crazy high. I don't I honestly don't know when you'd ever want to create one of these. Maybe there's an instance. I've never run into one. But this basically means that each individual color channel can have 32 bits of information per channel. And at that point, you're talking about color ranges in the billions and billions. So they, uh, depending on which biology textbook you read, but the human eye, in other words, your retina, can distinguish, I don't know, we'll just say between 10 and 15 million colors. Um, Again, you'll find varying information on that. Um, but that's what your human eye can distinguish. So typically, in a 24-bit document, when you have a range of 16.7 million, you know, that suffice, suffices, is that a word, sufficeth, for most use cases. Um, the only, the only uh, sort of confusing factor between these two values, a lot of people say, well, if an RGB JPEG can give me 16.7 million, and my eyeball can't even see that many, 
why would I ever need anything else? And the reason why is because even though your eye can't distinguish 16.7 million colors, it can distinguish more colors than an sRGB document um, can display. A, a silly way to think about this um, is even though this is 16.7 million colors, maybe 8 million of those are all in the blue or green area. So in other words, it's, it's not perfectly proportioned between the R, G, and B, um, red, green, and blue color space. So our eye can distinguish more colors than are in this available color space. But for all intents and purposes, it pretty much suffices. Um, so that's, what, that's why we refer to this as what's known as a true color. You'll see this term sometime. A JPEG document, a 24-bit document, we call a true color document, meaning we can pretty much represent anything our eyeballs can see in that color space. All right, um, hope you learned a little bit, and that'll be it for this tutorial.